for me, um, having something at the back kind of relieves a little bit of pressure when, like, say, if footy's not going good or whatnot, um, you get caught up in the, in the sense that, like, because that's all you know. But, like, for me, if I do have something um, in the back pocket that you can to rely on or, or fall back on, it kind of relieves that, that pressure. Um, that say if it doesn't work out, then you do have a plan B. One program we have started, which has been really good, is with um, Masters in Building and Trade. So they're a company that comes out and helps players get qualifications in the building trade, be it carpentry, bricklaying, concreting, things like that. But all our guys are doing the, the carpentry one. So we've had Jackson Ford, Corbin Sims in the past, and Tyrell Fumayono uh, get through, and they've actually now qualified uh, carpenters. Tyrell and Jackson have moved on, they're actually doing their Cert 4, which allows them what would be traditionally known as their builder's license. That's going to allow them to be supervisors on a job site. It's pretty thorough, it's a lot, of, a lot of content. It will still take a couple of years, but it is self-paced at the same time, so if you do commit more time to it, obviously you will um, proceed through the course a lot quicker than but it just yeah, it kind of decides on what I got with footy and if we're travelling, uh, I try to do it just at home of an afternoon. Well, yeah, when I typically just be watching Netflix or something like that, I try to while the sun's up, you know, make good use of my time. Yeah, so I did carpentry for three years. So it's, you're normally meant to do it for four years, but I got a um, contract after the third year for Dragons, so I just sort of got signed off. Yeah, I've continued to just do bits and pieces every now and then, like just when I can, just to like keep it ticking over sort of thing. They're both, as I said, qualified carpenters, which is great for them to have something that they get straight into when they leave. Uh, really self-motivated, um, good guys, and they enjoy being you know, on their days off, getting out on the job sites and doing a little bit of work. If I think about footy too much, I sort of feel like I'm just going nuts. So it's good to have just something to do outside of footy that a bit quiet and like just get through it. Like, a, I don't know, it takes your mind off footy if you're not playing too well too, I guess. It just gets you off just thinking about footy over and over again. My job is to assist the players during their rugby league career to make sure that they've got some things in place for when their rugby league career is over so they make a smooth transition, not so much into retirement but into the second phase of their life. Our education wellbeing program, we really try to make sure that it's not one size fits all. We try to individualise it for, for each person. So we sit down, we interview them, we work out what, what it is they want to do and then try to find either a course or work experience or you know a pathway that's going to help them as they progress through. If you're not studying, you're in the minority now. So yeah, and it's good. We try to celebrate the successes. You have something to lean on after footy, I guess, and while like all Scotty and that can set it up for you and they can give you a hand and they'll help you through everything, so, you know, it'd be silly not to think about something after footy. Yeah, I just do something. I like, why you got the opportunity for it to, to get paid for or they're going to allocate time around training schedule, just to make the most of it. Um, you might not even know what you like yet, but you're gonna, you'll find out eventually if you just keep doing something, you might find an interest and then that will develop into something that you can pursue.